Okay. Uh, here's the next topic, which is the performance. We are talking about loss, delay, and throughput. There are several different terminologies that you should be uh, familiar with. Okay. So, um, although we have talked about packet delay and uh, loss, but we still um, need to know where, when, and how packet delay and uh, loss occurs. Okay. Uh, when we talk about packet switching, uh, we will divide large messages into several small chunks and those small chunks is of, of course packet those packet will be transmitted from one host to another or to another router so um, basically um, as we see right here uh, we have two hosts a and b and the one router r1 and both a and b send packet to uh, r1 okay uh, according to the mechanism of packet switch those packet no matter from a or b we will be queued in the router buffers okay waiting for turn for transmission so it takes time for the routers to uh, push the packet out to uh to the next step which is r2 okay queue length grows when arrival rate to link okay temporarily exceeds output link capacity so if the Incoming rate, which is from A and B, are uh, a little bit larger than the outgoing traffic transmission rate, which is uh, right here. Maybe it's R bit per second. If A, the traffic from A and B exceeds the capacity of R bit per second, then the packet will be queued at R1's, route, uh, R1's buffer. Okay, so uh, since we need to wait. So that uh, that is the reason why packet has delay because we have to wait until the first packet be being pushed out to the next hop. Okay, so uh, that is the reason why. So the second packet loss occurs when memory of to hold queue packet fills up. Uh, since we have mentioned the uh, RAM or CPU capacity of a router as limited, because you you can have an unlimited buffer so it is always limited buffer so uh, if a and b continuously send packet to r1 router and then eventually the q and the r1 buffer will be filled up so uh, at the end it fills up so if there's any uh, additional packet comes from a or b and it would like to come into the buffer however there's no empty slot for this buffer so r1 will drop such kind of packet so it caused packet loss okay so that is the reason why we have delay and loss okay so uh, for the next view graph okay um, if we analyze it uh, more uh, deeply okay usually there are four different types for uh, or four sources of packet delay okay so uh, here's the equation for uh, for example this is r1 node right the delay of r1 node uh, they consist of four different types okay the first one is called node processing delay okay we uh, denote d proc basically um, after a packet being sent to R1, for example, uh, for example, this packet, uh, this blue packet has been sent to R1. R1 has several ports, right? Input port to receive such kind of digital uh, signal. And then the uh, network interface card at the port have to process, okay, to see if, it's, if there's any error. Is there any bit errors in the receiving packet? Okay, it has several different uh, algorithms or mechanisms that help us to help the uh, the router to check if the packet itself is has error or 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 is totally correct. Okay, so it, it takes time to do such kind of uh, uh, check, and then after R one receives such kind of uh, uh, the correct packet, it has to store those packet in the memory. As we mentioned before, the router has to perform store and forward 
mechanism, right? So it had to store and then do the forwarding. So uh, the CPU of R1 has, has, has to take some time to, um, to calculate where this blue packet should forward to port A or to port B or port C, port EFGHI, for, for, for example. So it takes time to do such kind of processing. So um, the second one is to determine the output link. So even if we know where the packet should go and the circuit in the R1, okay, those chip has to transfer the memory, uh, has to transfer the packet in the memory from one incoming port to the output link port, right? So it also takes time. Uh, usually those, um, those processing delay, they are typically less than microseconds. Microsecond is 10 minus six, okay? Power minus six, okay? It is a very, very small, small delay, usually, okay, usually, okay? That is one of the fourth uh, packet delay source. Okay, the second one is the queuing delay. So basically, since there is a queue, so we have to uh, line up in the queue, right? So when the blue packet comes in, okay, you can see that there are three other packets already in the queue. So uh, the blue packet has to wait, okay? Wait until the first packet goes to the next hub, the second to the next one, the third to the next one router, and then it's, uh, it's, it's time for the blue packet to transfer, transfer to the R2. So usually, um, usually we have another uh, um, a research field named curing theory. Okay, it is it combines uh, different um, mathematics, statistics, theories that helps you to find out what kind of what kind of mechanism to wait in queue, or what is the average time you have to wait in queue, or how many packet in the queue on the average. There are several uh, mathematics that they, they, they try to figure out those numbers. But um, in this class, we, we do not go, we, we will not introduce uh, any, any uh, part of the curing theory. So uh, we simply just to uh, know it is a dynamic value. So uh, we, we, usually we cannot we, we, we don't have it, uh, enough uh, numbers to help us to uh, evaluate evaluate how much time we should wait in, in a queue okay so it, because it depends on the congestion level of the router it depends on how large the queue is it depends on your uh, transmission rate to uh, from R1 to R2 it depends on how many packets has been sent from A and B so on so forth so it is a very dynamic value uh, usually we, we, we don't have enough numbers to estimate the curing delay. So that is the first two delay, node processing delay and curing delay. And usually they, you know, they take some time. Okay. So uh, in the following, we have the third and the fourth delay, which is transmission delay and the propagation delay. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at this part. Okay. Uh, when you transmit certain packet, certain bytes, certain bit from one network interface card to another interface card via certain uh, communication media, okay? So you, you need to take time. So uh, let's take a look at this figure right here, okay? You can think about one thing. For example, we would like to transfer some bit from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, okay? And usually uh, we use, um, for example, uh, a wave. To represent the signal okay so at the very first beginning right here right there should be a wave okay something like this okay although it is an analog wave that's okay okay this wave should be transferred from the left hand side to the right hand side and it will go to this direction right so right here okay we can draw a line right here for example draw another another line right here so if the span right here is one second, we can always calculate, okay, how many bits 
are represented by those signal. For example, if in those strange wave right here, it is, it has R bits in this one second span, then we will say that okay, in this line, in this media, okay, between the transmit uh, transmitter and the receiver, okay, we can send R bits within a second. So right here, uh, right here, so right here, we will say that the link transmission rate is R bits per second because you can squeeze, okay, a lot of signal, which is R bits in a second, okay? And what if, what if, okay, I use the blue color right here. What if, if I transfer, uh, if I transmit a signal, and of course, in a second, and those signal can represent, for example, um, S bits per second, um, let's say, 2R bits. If I can squeeze the signals, if the media allowed us to do so, or the chip of the internet network interface card allow us to do so, I can squeeze 2R bit signals in a single second, right? And then we will say that this link transmission rate is 2R bit per second. It depends on how you squeeze those signals in a second, okay? That is how we uh, describe link transmission rate. And now, if you have R bits, which is the packet length to transmit, and how long does this link take to transmit R bits, then the answer is R divided uh, by, uh, sorry, L divided by R. Right, you need to take L divided divided by L over R second to transmit to push all the L bits from the left hand side to the right hand side. Okay, that's the definition of transmission delay. Okay, that's the third one. Uh, and R is always the most important things we 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 most important things for us to to consider to use this uh, media or not to use this media because uh, usually the ethernet right the ethernet uh, is 100 megabit per second right so that means in a second uh, two inter two ethernet network card okay on the copper wire okay can transmit 100 million bit signal within a second so that is the capacity of this link that's the capacity capability of this network interface card. Okay, that's the third delay. You have to push L bits in a line and it takes time, which is L over R, okay? So the fourth one, uh, some students may, may, may uh, mix up with um, propagation delay and transmission delay. So I like to draw a figure right here. Um, think about one thing. Uh, here is the moon. And here, the bigger one is Earth. And uh, assume we would like to transmit some signals between uh, the Earth and the Moon. So we use the um, signal, the wireless signal, to transmit such kind of um, a signal from the, from, uh, for example, from the right hand side to the left hand side. Okay. In this case, okay, think about one thing. If there is a wave right here, something like that. And here, the blue circle place, okay, here, is the signal of the first bit. So we say that is the first, uh, the signal, sorry, the signal of first bit. And think about one thing. This wave will transmit from the Earth through the space and to the moon, to the receiver, right? And it takes time for this wave, for this uh, electromagnetic wave to transfer from the Earth to the moon, which is what we call 
propagation delay. The very first bit has to transfer to the moon, and it takes time. And usually, the first bit will propagate in a space, right? In a space, and it should be propagate under light speed, which is usually this number. But sometimes we use um, three or two, which is okay. Three times ten power eight meter per second. Okay. Think about another thing. If if I would like to transfer some signal from Earth to Mars. And you know the distance is far, far, far away from the Earth. So it, you, theoretically, it takes more time to propagate the first bit, the signal of the first bit from the Earth to the Mars. To Mars. Right? So what is the delay of such kind of propagation? Okay, the definition is right here. Okay, it's D over S. D stands for the distance between the receiver and the transmitter. And the S is the speed for the propagation. It depends on what kind of media you use. For example, in the space, it is light, light speed. In the copper wire, that it is a magnetic magnetic uh, transmit uh, propagation speed in, in the copper wire. It is a little bit different from light speed. Something like that. So it takes time to propagate the very first bit from the transmitter, which is from Earth, to the receiver, which is maybe on Mars. Okay, so that is the propagation delay. It takes time. Usually, when you tra transfer a signal, when you propagate a signal from Earth to Moon, it takes, I think, a few seconds. And it takes uh, maybe, I think it's 20 minutes to uh, from Earth to the Mars. Okay, so it's related to the distance between the receiver and the Transmitter, okay. And then let's take uh, let's take about let's think about one thing. After the very first bit transmitted to the moon, okay. After that, and then how long does it take for the second bit to arrive in the receiver? And let's think about one thing, okay. So uh, if if the if the transmission delay looks like this. Okay, we have a wave, right? We have a wave, and here is, for example, one second, right? And within this one second, we have 10 bits in certain uh, communication media, okay? So that means um, one second and 10 bits, right? So the, the span between each bit is 0.1 second. Yeah, that is the span. Right, the interval between the first bit and the second bit should be one second. Okay. For another example, the, the blue one, okay, if I can squeeze more signals in one second, okay, for example, 20 bits in one second, then the interval. The interval between the first bit and the second bit should be 0 0.05 second, right? So uh, when will the next bit arrive your transmitter? It's, it's related to your transmission speed or transmission rate or transmission delay. Okay, the second bit, the interval between the second bit and the first bit is, for example, 0 0.05 second. So when the first signal spent seven seconds, for example, a few seconds to go through the space, okay, it may, maybe it take, I think it takes se seven seconds to send a signal from the Earth to the Moon, okay, seven seconds. And then it only takes you 0 0.05 seconds to receive the second bit, and so on and so forth. The third bit is right after the second bit, 0 0.05 seconds, and so on, so forth, so on, so forth, so on, so forth. So you have to uh, to understand the transmission delay and the propagation delay is different. The transmission delay is the signal transmitted from the 
your tra、uh, transmitter to your receiver. And it is the capability how good your transmitter can squeeze bits within a second. So we have、uh, R bits per second, or two R bits per second, one megabit per second, something like that. So it takes time to transmit R L bit among this media, which is R bits per second. So the delay is R over L.、Uh, sorry, L over R. But the propagation delay is how far away from your transmitter to your receiver, and so it has a length of the physical link. Okay, it's right here. Over the propagation speed, which is usually light speed, light speed, to propagate your very first signal to the receiver, and so on, and so forth, so on, and so forth. So, uh, this this two different uh, uh delay is is different. So you have to make sure you understand the、uh, definition of uh transmission delay and propagation delay. But but usually, um, when we talk about delay. Usually, the propagation delay is not what we care about because,、uh, basically, on the Earth, okay,、uh, propagation the propagation delay is quite small. So usually, we、uh, we just simply just just ignore it because it is quite small.、Um, the transmission delay it depends on your transmission speed. For example, one one hundred megabit per second or one gigabit per second. So it takes maybe few milliseconds. Okay, and again. For the current delay, we we usually we don't know how 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 many seconds we should、uh, we we spend on on the current delay. So usually we just simply just ignore it. If or somebody tell you, okay, it takes、uh, one second or half second to to queue and to wait in the in the queue. Okay, and no problem. This is very very small because this is this delay is caused by the、uh, the chip. In in the router, so it's usually very small. So, uh, the major, um, delay is caused by transmission and queuing. But however, usually we don't know how uh how 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 much. Usually we don't know um how many seconds we should wait in a queue. So that is the four four different um types of um delay you should care about. Okay, so that is. Right here, okay. So, uh, next video graph. We will skip this one because we are talking about later, not now. So we sp skip this one. So next, so the next question is, uh, how do we measure the delays caused by those routers, those uh processing delay or uh less queuing delay? Um, usually we, uh, we cannot directly. Major those four types of delay, so we have another tool called trace route. Okay, this uh this uh utility uh in your Mac, your Linux or your Windows, they all provide this small program called trace route or called T R A C E R T A C E R T. Okay, in in Windows. Okay, its name is T R A C E R T in Mac. And the Linux.、Uh, the name of this、uh, this utility is called Trace Route. Okay, this Trace Route can help us to measure the end-to-end -end delay on the internet. Okay, let's take example right here. For example, we have a source right here. We have a destination right here, and there are five routers. Okay, between source and destination. Okay, so we have two hosts and five. Routers, so in in total we have seven machine, right? And we have six different links in this path, right? Six different links. So how trace route works? Okay, in the first first run, okay, first run, the sender, okay, which is the S, will send three small packets. To the destination. However, this packet is a、uh, is a very special packet. Okay, in its packet content, it specify、um, when we do routing. So we, when we send the packet from S to R one to R two R three R four and R five to end to the destination. Okay, all the routers between S and destination 
they will take a look at these three small packets okay so three packets were sent out from s okay to the first to the first um to the first hop uh after first hop it goes to r1 right and r1 will check this three small packet and it says okay it's from s to this to destination however it is the first run right so the first router will stop forwarding this packet to this to the destination the first router will return this three small packet back to the source okay that is the first run and then you know the second run Again, it sends three small packet and to the first router, which is R1. And then R1 will keep forwarding the three small packet to the second router. But the second router, okay, take a look at the packet. Okay, uh, it is the second round. So I'm the second router. So the router will not keep forwarding the packet to a destination. And in, in turn, it will send the, this three small packet back to R1 and then the source and so on and so forth so if uh, for example in this example we have five routers and one destination right so the source will send six different runs of three small packet and for the first run r1 will reply for the second run r2 will reply third and so on and so forth and to the end at the sixth round the destination will receive the three small packet and send it back to R5, R4, R3, R2, R1, and the source. And for each run, the source will, will try to figure out what is the delay when the source sent the first three packet and received the return three packet in the first run, the second run, third run, the third, fifth, fourth, fourth, and so on and so forth. So that is, a, that is how, uh, how do we measure the end-to-end -end delay. The end-to-end -end stands for from the source to the destination. So by using the, uh, the utility trace route, we can uh, somehow measure the time, the delay. Of course, the delay is the processing delay, transmission delay, propagation delay, and the queuing delay of these routers. Okay? That is how it works. So um, in the textbook, we have an example like here. Okay, so here is the um, host A, and here is the host B. Oh, sorry, sorry. Here is the S, which is the source, and it is the destination. So we have two machines, but we don't know how many routers uh, are uh, between these two um, source and destination. So at the first beginning, at the first run. The source will send three packets, small packets, to the destination. So at this part here, this CHGW, maybe it means computer science gateway. Okay, that is the name of this machine. Okay, this is the first router. The first router will reply three these three small packets back to the source, which is S. And the S can measure okay, the time spent by this three small packet. So it takes one millisecond from the source to the first router. Okay? And it takes one millisecond, one millisecond, and two millisecond. And as we know, since the queuing delay, processing delay is a little bit dynamic, so uh, naturally, these three numbers should not be the same. Right? That is because uh, for example, for the third packet, okay, for the third packet is right here. Maybe it queues in the queue, so it needs to take uh, more time to wait in the queue. So after the router return this uh, this third packet back to the source, right, it takes more it takes more time. So something like that. So uh, here's the second router, okay, which is uh, UMass. EDU, which is uh, one of the router in the UMass EDU, and it says one millisecond, one millisecond, and two millisecond to uh, reply the three small packet back to R1 and the source, and so on and so forth, so on and so forth. 
okay so on and so forth so, forth. so um, in total it takes 19 different hubs from the source to the destination to uh, to build up such kind of uh, routing path okay and there are several routers <coughs> helps you to do such kind of uh, measurement okay so uh, here are some um, interesting things right uh, for example right here uh, Router is a very busy machine, so it needs to take time to do uh, store and forwarding. Need to, to need time to um, determine which packet or which port this packet should be forwarded to. Right, so router is very busy. So for some routers, they will not help you to do such kind of uh, trace route measurement. So they simply just drop your packet. So uh something like that okay that means no response okay the problem might be lost the router might not reply such kind of measurement because the router don't want to do so something like that okay uh the next one uh interesting things is right here as we can see that the seventh router it takes 22 milliseconds to uh to transfer packet from the source to the seventh uh, router, but for the eighth, this one, it takes one hundred and six milliseconds. So, um, we can expect that this link should be very very long. So, uh, that might be the transoceanic links. As you can see, that this is uh, UMass to uh, to some place in France, right? So maybe that is the um, transoceanic length between the 7th and the 8th router okay uh, another interesting thing is, is right here so that we can see that um, uh, let's take uh, uh, right here I think that is a better better example we can see that for for uh, for the problem packet at the 11th Router it takes 100, 112 milliseconds to do such kind of uh, transmission, right? And but the other prop at the 12th round it only takes 111 milliseconds, which is a little bit less than the previous one. But as we mentioned before, um, the queuing delay, the processing delay the transmission the so on so forth those did some of the delays are unpredictable unpredictable they are dynamics so um sometimes we, we can see that uh if you do the round trip time to the 12th router it might sometimes okay sometimes it might the the time take the time it takes may might be a little bit less than a round trip time from your source to the 11th router because the delay time is dynamic so that is the interesting thing so you can you can try okay so uh let's take a look at uh, um some interesting things okay so uh, i would like to show you how it works so uh, i will give you uh, my command line interface which is right here okay so uh, i use a mac so uh, T R A C E R O U T E. Trace route is the command command name. So let's take a look at how. Uh, sorry. So the source is my computer, and the destination I right here is triple w dot google dot com. So we press enter. So here is the result. Okay, between me. Okay, and the last final uh, destination, which is the route Google, we have 12 rounds of problem. So the first round we take, it takes, uh, so right here, it takes uh, about four milliseconds, okay? Or three or four, it, it depends on different um, delays. So um, to the Google, server okay sometimes it takes 12 milliseconds or sometimes it may 
encounter some delays or some queue problems. So it takes 39 milliseconds or sometimes 20 milliseconds. It's all dynamic. It depends on how, um, how the congested situation of your network and your, uh, th those routers is something like that. Okay, so I think it is, uh, you can try that at home. Okay, use these small um, tools. Okay, and right here we can see that in this small tool, uh, the maximum hops you can uh, perform is 64. That is because we believe the network, uh, internet is network of network, right? So in such kind of network, uh, any two hosts, okay, there should be the, the, the distance between these two hubs, there should be less than 40, uh, 64 hubs so that you can connect to you, from you, to any arbitrary host on the internet. So the maximum hubs right here is 64. And as we can see, it only takes us 12 hubs from my home to um, Google's server. And we can see that these numbers are not quite large. So uh, we can uh, expect that this server is in Taiwan, not in the United States, because Google will set up several different routers, several different replica routers in different countries. So that when we access those, uh, for example, www.google.com, we, we don't have to uh, go through the transoceanic link to United States to get our uh, search result okay google has several different replicas in different countries so we can retrieve those servers those uh, web pages okay within taiwan island you don't have to do transit ocean links um, to, we don't have to go through those links okay so uh, i think that is the example okay so um we we have already mentioned those before, uh, but the, the textbook, the slide says, okay, uh, here is the packet loss. Uh, we have buffers, we have queues. So proceed, proceeding links in buffers has a finite capacity because we have limited RAM, okay, as we mentioned before. So it, it is a queue. So we have a first in, first out rules. So packet arrived to a full queue will be dropped it, as known as lost. Okay, those packet might be transmitted by the previous node, which is A and B right here, or by the source. But the route F, uh, the router will not deal with any loss problem. If it dropped a packet, it will not notify anyone that a packet has been dropped by me, by a router. Okay, the route, uh, the sender, which is A or B, has to figure out. Okay, it. By it by themselves to see if they need to retransmit those packet or not okay we will talk about how packet are retransmitted in the later chapter okay so that is packet lost okay here is the terminology called throughput okay um, throughput the unit of throughput is still bits and second but it is a little different from transmission rate, although transmission rate is also bit per second, right? Okay, um, as a destination, okay, even if a source sends some messages, some, sends some packet really fast, for example, 10 gigabit, 10, big, 10 gigabit per second, for example, uh, but as we mentioned before, there's always bottleneck. There's always a router in the path. It has a has a uh, has, has a full queue, right? Because router is very busy. So sometimes your packet might lost. So you have to think about one thing: the the bits you receive from the server. Sorry, uh, the bit you receive from the server is not always all the bits sent from the server. For example, the server can send one, uh, for example, 10 gigabit, right? But the packet may drop, dropped it by those routers. So the bits you receive 
at the destination may be a little bit less than the bit sent from the server, right? And if the server take one second to send all those 10 gigabit data, but as we know, there's a processing delay, current delay, propagation delay, transmission delay in those routers. So maybe when you receive those 10 gigabit packet, it takes you more time, more than one second to receive all those 10 gigabit packet. So at the destination, okay, the destination may feel like that the receiving, the actual receiving rate, which is this word, throughput. The throughput of the destination may be less than the sending rate of the source because the packet might lost. So you receive less filter bits. And the sending time of the ser of the sender maybe one second, right? One second to send 10 gigabits, right? But when I receive in those bits, it may take me 1.2 seconds, 1.5 seconds. So the throughput at the destination might be less than the sending rate at the sending server, the source. But actually, throughput, uh, uh, we, we usually believe that the throughput is a little bit important than the transmission rate because the throughput is the actual rate you receive useful and correct bits within a, a certain period of time. Okay, so throughput is more important, okay? And uh, there are some figures, but I think it, I think this is not that important because uh, that means if you encounter a bottleneck in, in your path, your throughput might decrease, okay? So that is quite easier to understand. And sometimes you have a very complex network, so multiple servers should compete, uh, need to compete a very narrow bottleneck link. So it takes time. So your throughput may decrease. So it's the same. Okay. Uh, so I think that is the um, loss, packet loss, and uh, packet delay that we like to talk about in this section. So we stop right here. Um, we will continue the session next hour.